Hey, 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 my name is Paul Slings. Welcome to Katawa Shoujo. Uh, first of all, sorry there wasn't an episode yesterday. And I ended up only uploading uh, the poker game. But, well, there kind of... That there kind of wasn't any other choice. I was a bit busy, <clears throat> unfortunately, and was not able to prepare the next episode. So, so yeah, there is that. And I had the poker ready, kind of. So yeah, hopefully today I can manage for two days uh, worth of uploads. Anywho, I stand on moving. In front of the door to the nurse's office, for what feels like at least a dozen minutes or so. It's not like I never entered a small beige room before, nor is it because of any feeling of childlike anxiety over the visit. But it's because the nurse's office is akin to a confessional, an admission that my body is locked, the knowledge that such a fuck is kept entirely confidential between the nurse and me hardly lessens the feeling. Remembering that the bell to sign out the end of lunch break will soon sound. Will sound soon. I give a sigh and open the door. The burden will still be just this whole lo this while longer. Well now, if it is Nakai, good to see you. Or bad, I guess, considering that I'm a nurse. He gives a small laugh, amused at his little joke. I find his humor lacking and somewhat off, but the fact that he can make light of such a situation is perhaps comforting or at least distracting. His brief episode of entertainment over, he claps his hands together and gets down to the business. I take a seat as he gestures for me to do so. I wish the classrooms had seats this comfortable. <laughs> I can feel my mind wandering as my eyes quickly scan the room, distracted by the small changes since I last came. What? What What changes? What? Alrighty, so what brings you here? I haven't seen you often, so I assume your health's been good so far. <laughs> About that, man. <laughs> well, mostly. <laughs> I see. His smile drops as I tied off. I feel slightly guilty about it. It's these moments where I can't rationally call myself normal that make me so reluctant to see the nurse. They're an admission that I'm different from everyone else. Good music, by the way. While I was on the trip during the long weekend, I had a few problems with my heart. He hums very seriously and nods as he does so, urging me to go on. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was as I was walking a fairly long distance. I think the right term for it is a heart flutter. I suddenly went weak at knees and felt almost like I was having a small heart attack, but it passed in about half a minute. Even afterward, though, I felt pretty fatigued and nauseous. Hmm, not good. Not good at all. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That was how many days ago, exactly. Do you go do anything unusual aside from exerting yourself before the episode? Were you taking your medication properly? The nurse switches from awkward jokester to serious health professional mode, rattling off questions, making notes, and calling up stuff on his computer. I mean, technically he didn't take the medication on that day. I tell him about my forgetting take pills the morning and the preceding evening. It was a stupid thing to do, but I can't change anything about it now, except answer honestly and bite the bullet. His seriousness evolves into a throw, and it okay evolves into an instant checkup. I finish buttoning up my shirt and again get motions to take a seat in front of the nurse. Damn. I used to have. Actually, not I, but uh, my mom used to have a printer like this. A humongous one. I mean, she's an accountant, so. Anyway, is this the first heart problem you've had since coming to Yamaku? Mm, no. The hit and run <laughs> girl. <clears throat> um, I've had short pains in my chest before just a couple of times, but they were more discomfort than anything like this. He lives back in his chair, briefly resembling a white coat po Poirot. Huh, you think I didn't know how to say that? As he moves over the mysterious case of the heart flutter. 
moving his lips from side to side to show his thinking, his non-existent moustache wiggling, he eventually comes to a conclusion. Well, you survived it, that's always on the plus side. I blink at this one, but notice the nurse wearing his got you face. It's actually someone treasuring. I don't think he would crack jokes if things were really serious, so I keep silent take, and take my lumps. I'll have to talk with you, doctor, but right now I expect it simply due to physical exertion. Which means, you must have been working out! <laughs> have you been keeping up with regular light exercise like I directed you to? I, I make sure to walk a reasonable amount every day. It's usually enough to work up a bit of sweat, but then again I'm not really as fit as I used to be. That should be enough then. The main thing to keep in mind is to regular low stress exercise. Whoops. No short bursts of sprinting and such. Uh, I mean, technically I'm not doing that myself. I'm just running 10 kilometers, right? And technically other workout inside the house. On the days I'm not running. Surprisingly enough, I did the workout before recording, so that's wonderful. Anyway, I understand. Since leaving the hospital, I've been a lot more focused on my studies. Partly. That's a lie. Partly take my mind off, not being able to do more physical things. I mean, maybe a bit, but... Ah, whatever. It's good to hear you're coping well. Sudden lifestyle changes can be hard at the best of times. So I'm pleased to hear that you sound like you have everything in order. Almost everything, that is. Nevertheless, I want to keep a close eye on you for a while. Just for observation's sake. Just to make sure things aren't going downhill, you understand? That's something I really didn't want to hear. Since coming to Maku, all I've wanted to do is live as a normal life as possible. Observation was one of the words I came to hate most during my hospital stay. <clears throat> for so long, I felt as if I could have just walked straight out the hospital doors, if not for that observation that doctors wanted so dearly. Sure, should I come in more often? He checks the calendar next to his computer, which seems to inflict on him a nasty case of furbro. He spins back towards me after that. Mm, the summer holidays are a bit of a pain, considering the timing. I'll check with the doctor, try and get a better handle on the situation and see how he wants to proceed, but I think you should just take things slowly and carefully for now. Won't you? What you are describing doesn't immediately sound like a recurring, recurring event, but it won't hurt to slow down a bit for a while, just to make sure. What should I do for today? He looks over my shoulder at the clock hanging over the door. I'd never have noticed it if I hadn't followed his gaze. It's nearly time for school to be over, so you might as well just leave early. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> he gives me a sly wink, making sure that I understand he's doing me a favor. Well, nurses are theirs. Thanks. That's what I'm here for, after all. I know you might not want to hear it, but you can ignore your condition. Don't hesitate to see me if you have any further problems, or if you just have anything you want to ask. Bye. Technically, I've never been uh, allowed to leave early from school because of nurse. There were times where I <clears throat> left early on my own. <coughs> don't do it, don't do it. Uh, I mean, at, at some point I was allowed to leave early as well, because, you know, uh, when in the very beginning at least, uh, when I was still playing football, we actually had games on Mondays. Yeah, it was on Mondays, so I was allowed to early leave early back then. Because I got that piece of paper saying, uh, leave for the club. Blah, 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 blah. I don't remember the exact words really, but yeah, I could just leave because of that. And so on. One time I left thanks to feeling bad was in high school. And it was funny because I literally felt like crap. And the moment I walked out, I got better. <laughs> I don't know why, but it happens with me like this. Anyway, I mean, I, ha I had the same case with that appendix I talked about, right? 
for the entire night my stomach hurt like crazy and then I enter uh, the doctor's office yo I'm actually good <laughs> but I wasn't anyway he spins around and gets back to typing on the computer in front of him I suppose I'll just read before waiting for needed by the gate considering I don't have much else to do even as I leave his words echo in my mind my condition is nothing as limiting as many of the others here in Yamaku that's kind of true and I don't want to burden you with thinking about it. If I just live life normally and avoid any short, sharp shocks, we need to watch out for Emmy. <laughs> I should be okay. I won't let my condition rule me. Nice, good approach, man. Uh, there probably was an intermission. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. You know the one Katawa Shoujo one with the logo and so on, but there wasn't. Lily comes into the view soon after the bells, heralding the end of the school day ring out. She says farewell to a number of her classmates, headed in the other direction before bringing her weekly trip to the convenience store. Afternoon, Lily. <gasps> the immediate war smile and relax the manner she assumes upon seeing my presence are unexpectedly welcome. Hello, Hisa. Good afternoon to you too. She hesitates for a second, but eventually deigns to tilt her face forward and close her eyes. My lips meet hers with a measure of side trepidation before we move off hand in hand. The fact that we're so close in half is somewhat useful at times. Right? It's nice. There being no need for either of us to turn our head upwards or downwards in order to meet the others. It doesn't take much time to leave the noise of the other students far behind us. The tapping of Lily's cane in her free hand. The only sound to be heard. Silence. Blissful silence is all that greets us while we slowly walk in the setting sun's light. Actually, that's why I like running late into the evening. 10 p.m. basically, right? Almost. A little before. It depends on the day really when I walk out, but... Uh, yeah, I like it. It's... Sure, there are cars driving around sometimes, sometimes there are people walking around, but other than that, it's the peace and quiet for once in the middle of city, right? It's cool. Anyway, uh, I think I'm coming to really like this town. The huge green, hilly expanse, the trees everywhere, the somewhat rustic little buildings. So, you've come to appreciate the tranquility of it as well? I think so. I came from a metropolitan city near Tokyo, so the quiet of this town really alienated me from when I first arrived. Metropolitan. Let's have a look. Tokyo. Why did I Google? I should have Googled Japan. Okay, map. A metropolitan city near Tokyo. Let's see. What do we have? What city do we have? Like a big city, let's say. Okay. There is Yokohama. There is Saitama, there is Kawasaki close by. Uh, what else do I know? Basically, Chiba, maybe it was Chiba. Uh, I mean, that's about it that I recognize at least, you know, from, from, from my knowledge. I don't know. Maybe one. Maybe he's from one of those, right? Uh, so the quiet of the sound really alienated me when I first arrived. Okay. After a while, it became really nice. For, and I think I, f I prefer to the hustle and bustle of my home city now. Yes, yes. That, that's what I like myself. Why well, I prefer the quiet of such a rural town even when I first arrived? I suppose I had the adventure of growing up in a quiet area before I came. Hanako said the surroundings are very pretty too. Yeah. Lee may said such a thing quite easily, but each time she mentions how other described sites around her as beautiful or pretty, I feel a little put off. And lose her expression becoming one of anticipation for some question or another. She always had a good sense for when somebody's not saying something that's on their mind. So I might as well speak up. Uh, I was kind of wondering um, how to put this. Um, do you ever mm, regret that you can't see what things look like for yourself? It's just something I've been thinking about. 
She thinks carefully, carefully for a time. Do you ever regret that you can't hear people whispering on the other side of the room? You can, do you? I can only speak for myself, but the fact that I can't see is the only way I've experienced life. Just as I cannot do something you can, you can do something that I'm capable of. Okay, I think this line kind of gives me the answer to one question I, I had before. So basically, if she was blind from the basically moment she was born, or if she lost the sight at some point, seems like it's from the very beginning. Anyway, the fact that the world is made for those who are sight can be a pain sometimes, but there are many, many people suffer, who suffer much more than I because of the way the world is. Mm -hmm. I guess that does make sense, but still, it just feels kind of bad to describe something that you can't experience to you. She tilts her head quizzically, as if I just said something that makes very little sense at all. But I can experience it. You just said yourself that you like this area because of the way the surroundings are. I like this area for the very same reason. Thanks to the fact that this small rustic town surrounded by trees, it gives some peace and quiet away from the din at school and the bustle, not to mention the smells of the city. I suppose it will also be much like the home she shared with Akira as well. Her outlook on it seems pretty sensible, and I'm not surprised that she's got a much better handle on her particular condition than I do on mine. Just like how her coming from a location somewhat similar to Yamako's surroundings let her become more acclimatized in a shorter time. Being born blind affected her stance by her own admission. I should stop being so annoyed with myself over it, but I can't shake the feeling that I've depended on Lily for far too much, given the circumstances most have had to deal with in Yamaku. Ah, <sighs> that makes a lot of sense. You're pretty good at explaining, as always. Come think of it, where is Hanako anyway? She goes with us for lunch. It seems she's busy studying. The exams are far from over, and she said she wants to do better this year than last. While well, admire her work ethic, she's really been trying to give us a lot of room alone recently. She's that type of person, I think. The kind that puts others' needs above her own at every chance. She's a sweet girl, even for so much has hurt her in the past. I don't know, I feel like it's only now, when she's less close to me than ever, that she's truly finding herself. I mean, on the other hand, let's, let's face it, we've managed to somehow open her up to the world, right? I would say that's a good thing. It was thanks to you that she began to become more confident, after all, not me. Yes. I take my hand from hers and gently place it on her head. The important thing is that you were there for her. I can't even imagine what she'd be like without having found someone like you. That much became obvious while you were in Scotland. We're all still friends, so we just got to have faith in her. I think she'll become a good person. I mean, she is a good person, man, come on. And that much is thanks to you being there for her when she most needed it, just as you were there for me. It makes me feel a bit childish when you sound so wise. I can sound wise from time to time. Will I try? Are you doing anything on the weekend, by the chance? Nothing that comes to mind. Why? And how about a date on Sunday? It'd be something to be do besides the exam preparations. Come. Browser move. Thank you. There is something I need to check. Countering my rapidly beating heart, she simply smiles and nods. That would be lovely. Where would you like to go? Mm. Okay, I guess it would be told that move. Her face suddenly changes to one of disapproval. Wait, what? No, 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 that's not how you do it. He saw. Can you guess where I'm taking you? <laughs> anyway, her face suddenly changes to one of disapproval. You can do that, he saw that she think. Do what? A gentleman should never ask a lady where to have a date. Uh, 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 oh, oh, <laughs> oh. That's true, I mean... 
sure the, that one is tricky but you know be creative or or don't be creative even just something normal is gonna work out for you too that's for sure <laughs> Her smile quickly comes back, assuring me that she's far from serious. Don't worry about it. I'll think about where we could go. No, 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 no. I'll think about where we could go. I'll leave it to you then. I want to decide on the next date for. <sighs> With our plans for the weekend mate, the rest of the walk down the hill continues in silence. The prospect of that lasting for any length of time, however, is shattered as I catch sight of a familiar figure waiting for us. Her hand held high. Who is it? Who is it? You! <laughs> Thank you! Please come again! The change in temperature as I step outside from the convenience storage sends a chill up my spine. <laughs> it feels like summer's starting to wind down. Looking at my side, the same thing seems to affect Lily as well, for unlike me, she doesn't manage to hide the fact. Something I didn't realize at first was how physically delicate she is. Even compared to the likes of Hanako. <laughs> if I had to describe her, I'd have to say that she reminds me of a China doll. China doll. Come on. China doll. China doll. China doll. Nope, that's creepy. If I had described her, I read this, okay. A hero walks up behind her and gives a couple of hard, hard pats on the shoulder, much to Lee's consternation. For a moment, she looks as envious of my status as an only child sign of their close relationship. I mean, being an only child. I don't know. Would I want to have. Brother or sister? I guess both yes and no. <laughs> I don't have so I and I don't have anything to complain about, right? Then again, yeah. I mean, I don't really mind being only child. Anyway. They talk between themselves for a few moments, as I sort out my backs. Their voice is too low for me to catch, but eventually they break off and we begin to walk back to the school. Ah, it feels good to be out of the damn office! You kids don't know how good you have it here! <laughs> kids? <laughs> you too then! Kids grow up so fast nowadays! You're not old enough to say that! I don't know. Being around Hideaki makes me feel damn old. He's so precocious. He reminds me of you when you were younger. He's a nice boy. It would be a shame if Shizune comes to have too much of an influence in home on him. Yeah. Akira gives an amused snort at her sister's antipathy. She really doesn't seem to regard it as anything to make serious fools about treating it more like a childhood spot. She looks over to me, apparently not only just remembering that I'm here, and gives a small grin as she reaches towards her back pocket. What is it? Just said, let me dig it out. After quite some difficulty, she manages to retrieve her black leather wallet from her back pocket, quickly fishing out what looks to be a folded square of paper. With Lily uh, all but unaware of what's happening, Akira unfolds the scrap and hands it to me. Nanda! Oh yeah, okay, that's Misha. That's Misha. She had a different hair color. I forgot. An old photo. What looks to be a younger Lily and Shizune. Clearly already being annoying. You can tell by the expression of her face. Operating in stall with some other girl in the background. She looks vaguely familiar, but I can't quite pinpoint why. It's Misha. It's Misha. What is it, Akira? I think you know. Lee moves this over for a few months before realization downs on her. Akira, you really needn't. 
It's fine, isn't it? Besides, it's like the only foot I have of you to since you entered Yamako where you are not at each other's throats. I look back to the photo in my hand. It does seem strange to see Lily and Shizune working together so diligently without any sign of animosity. If the photos of them during Yamako's festival, that means it must have been taken one or two years ago. In other words, a time when they were both in the studio council together. Who's the girl in the back? She looks kind of familiar. Uh, I knew I didn't recognize her. It's Misha before she went and dyed her hair pink. That's... No way. No. It feels extremely strange to see Michelle without her so distinctive hairstyle. Judging from Akira's tone, she doesn't take favorably to Misha's idea of fashion. I suppose that fact just accentuates how odd the situation looks. To think they were so friendly in the past. I wish I could do something to mend the relationship. You're being very quiet, Hisawa. Yeah, but it just feels kinda strange to see you all friendly like this. Lee moves to say something, but stops herself. In the end, this isn't a matter for me, it's between Shizune and Lee, and nobody else. Things change, unfortunately. Yeah. Sometimes that's true. I hand the photo back to Akira, who sighs as she folds it up and slides it back into her wallet. A little memory, quietly hidden away to be pulled out again sometime later. Yeah, that they do. I usually think her cross reaction to be simply in response to the situation between Lily and Shizune, but she looks all the gloom compared to what I expect. Lily's expression has clouded as well. What's wrong? Ah, uh, just that I'll be going to Scotland fairly soon. You're leaving for Scotland again? For a long moment, Akira looks surprised. It's an ill-fitting expression for her. After a glance at Lily, she turns back to me as she's never done so. Yeah, in a couple of weeks I'll be leaving for Inverness to work at the company's headquarters. I think Inverness has a team in the first league, right? In the first or... So I think they were in the first. I mean, at least they were from what I remember. Now I don't know. I'm so not following football as I used to in the past. Uh, it used to be like a religion at some point. Now, like, I don't care. I even stopped watching uh, technically my favorite team uh, and like do it once every now and then. Okay, they are not in the Scottish Premiership. Where is Inverness? In the second division, which is absolutely apparently called Division 1, okay. And they might be getting relegated. Ooh. Inverness, Inverness. Inverness, if you want some help, just just message me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I I probably wouldn't be able to 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 do much over there. Uh, do I recognize someone from the team? Not really. No people I would know. Okay. Uh, to work at the company's headquarters, it's a pretty big jump in corporate position and it's not a chance that's going to come again. Understandable. So Akira is going to leave Japan on what seems to be a permanent, permanent basis. I can't help feeling that my assumption that we could all happily while away our days, having fun in the isolated world is coming to an end. It's unsettling. I look at Lily. Mildly surprised that she hasn't, hasn't told me such a thing despite usually being so forthcoming. She continues to walk with her eyes fixated, pointed, fi sorry, fixedly pointed ahead. I can't read her expression nor can I even guess what's on her mind, which is discomforting given how it's really easy for me to do both. It reminds me of the time when we met at the Shanghai just before what could be called our first date. At the time, all I could do was comfort her without knowing the so cause, and now feels no different. As we finally reach the school dormitories once again, there is a somewhat awkward silence. I don't think I'm the only one who feels it. See you tomorrow then, Lily. Bye, Akira. Good night, Hisa. Hmm. See ya! And with that, they walk to the female dormitories. Opening door to the male ones, I stop and look back at them just moments before the figures appear behind the heavy wooden door. Now the question is, 
What about Lily? Is she staying or is she moving with Akira now that I think about it? Uh, that was a strange moment when Akira said she was leaving. While that wasn't the first time when my thoughts regarding my new life had been called into question, it's perhaps the first time to do it quite so profoundly. I still don't know what to make of Akira's reaction, much less of Lily's. But now it still reminds me to get back to my room before I catch something. My box pulling down my arms with seemingly redoubled wave. If nothing else, I have a date with her set up for the weekend. I just need to stop overthinking stuff and get on with things as they are. I'm the master of everything there, by the way. The exams are still ongoing, after all, and with the trimester's end and the summer holidays being soon, there will be plenty to keep me busy for a while. As I give a yawn and retreat inside, my thoughts turn to what we will decide to set as the location of our weekend rendezvous. We will find out in the next episode of Kandawa Shoujo. For now, hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.